I'm going to show you how to build a custom chatbot like ChatGPT, but one that can answer questions based on a PDF document that you have uploaded. Hopefully I'll show you that creating an open AI chatbot isn't that difficult. You can upload any document that you like. It could be a document about your company, your product, or maybe an event that you are hosting. But to demonstrate, I'm going to use my resume and then I'll have a chatbot that people can use to ask questions about me and my background and skills. This video is aimed at developers. You'll need to at least be familiar with building a web page using JavaScript, HTML and CSS to follow along. You can see a link to the example project we're covering at the bottom of the video. Grab a copy of that so you can follow along. We're going to skim over many technical details. So think of this as more of an overview of how the example project works. Before we get into the nuts and bolts, let's see what the end result looks like. This web page shows my resume and you can see the chatbot off to the right. If you want to try out this example for yourself, you can see a live demo of it by following the URL at the bottom of the video. We can ask questions of the chatbot and it will answer those questions from the document that I provided it. This example uses my resume as the document, but for your own chatbot, you can use whatever document you like. Before we can make an open AI chatbot, we need to have a few things in place. First, we need a PDF document that we can upload to our chatbot. When the chatbot is finished, we're going to be able to ask questions about that document. Next, we need an OpenAI account. OpenAI is what makes all this possible. They are the company behind ChatGPT and they provide the API that will power our chatbot. Lastly, we'll need a place to host the web page for our chatbot. I'm not going to cover that uh, in this video, but maybe in a future video if people ask for it. Here are the steps that we go through to create our chatbot. We're going to have to create a PDF document to upload to our chatbot. Then we're going to get into OpenAI. Uh, you'll sign up for it or log into your existing account if you have one and get your API key. And then we'll create an OpenAI assistant. That's the thing that we're going to upload our document to. Then we're going to create a web application to, to render our chatbot and a back end to talk to OpenAI. Eventually, and although we're not going to cover it in this video, we'd also like to deploy our web application so we can share it with the public. You might already have your document in PDF format. And if you do, just put it aside because you'll upload it soon to your chatbot. But otherwise, if you don't already have a document to upload, it's easy enough to take any document and export it to a PDF file. You can see here I have my resume open in Google Docs and I'm exporting it to a PDF file. We can also export a web page from Google Docs. This is useful and this is how I got my resume into HTML format so that I could also include it in my web application. Now it takes a bit of work to make the exported HTML usable in your chosen web framework. And I'm not going to show how to do that. But if you wanted to do it, you might need to put aside a couple of hours to do the conversion. It's, uh, it's not hard, but it's kind of tedious and it takes a while. To use the OpenAI API from our web application, we'll need an account. So sign up to OpenAI, then navigate to the API keys page. And from here, you can create a new API key and take a copy of it. Take note of your API key. That's what we need to make our web applications backend talk to the OpenAI API. Now we can create an OpenAI Assistant. Navigate to the Assistance page. Click the Create button. Now enter a name for your chatbot. You can also enter instructions here. This is the initial prompt that we provide to seed the conversation with the chatbot. And any prompts that you might use with ChatGPT will work here. Then we choose a model to use. Now be sure to enable retrieval. This is what allows the chatbot to learn from the PDF document that we upload. And finally, we can actually upload our PDF document. Before we try to integrate this chatbot into our web application, we should first test it right here. We can use the chatbot directly in the OpenAI Playground to test it and make sure it does what we want before we go to all the effort of making a web page to host it. We're gonna to need to add multiple things to our web application to make the chatbot work. First, on page load, we're going to have to create a chat thread. And then as the user types messages to the chatbot into the input and they click the send button, we're going to send those messages to the chatbot. And of course, as the chatbot is coming up with answers, we're going to have to receive the messages from the chatbot. And then we're going to have to display those messages to the user. Let's start having a look at the code that makes this work. At this point, you might want to get the example project for yourself and you can download the code or clone the repository for yourself and follow along with the code that you're about to look at. 
I just need to give a shout out to the person who created the chatbot UI that I'm about to show you. I'm not a web designer, so I didn't want to make this myself. So I got this uh, chatbot UI for, that was made by Porter Smith. You can find it on the Tailwind Components webpage. The UI is created using Tailwind, which I know and love. So that worked really well for me, uh, but it wasn't it wasn't built on React, which is the framework that I'm using. So I had to convert this uh, over to React, but I got a nice UI out of it. So I was pretty happy with that. And uh, just a thank you there to, to Porter Smith for putting that out there for me to use. So let's take a quick look at the setup for the back end of the chatbot web application. The only reason this even needs a back end is because you don't want to access the OpenAI API directly from your front end. Because if you did that, you'd have to put your API key in your front end code, and that would be a security issue because everyone in the world could see it then. So we need a back end, but the example back end that I'm showing you is really simple. It, it's, it's no more complicated than it needs to be. You can see the basic setup here. It's JavaScript on Node.js. We're using an express web server, and I created the first version of this web server from the Hello World um, Express example that you can find in the Express documentation. We've integrated the OpenAI library through NPM, and we've included that into our backend code, and we're initializing it, you can see there, and plugging in our API key. You can see here a snippet of the code for the front end. It's TypeScript code. We're using the React framework, although you can use any framework you like. The chatbot doesn't depend on the, on the framework we use in the front end. The front end is bundled using Parcel. I've just put everything in the app component. It could be factored better than this. It could be, but it's simple enough that it all just lives in the app component. You can see that on page load, we call the create thread function. That creates the initial chatbot thread or message thread through the back end and to the OpenAI API. You can also see that we're polling the back end for updated messages from the chatbot every second. This is just a simplified version in the real version that's live. And you can look at the code for yourself if you want to see this. We are only doing the polling while a run is active. So while, while the AI is thinking about a response is the only time we're polling in the real version. And then at the bottom, you can see where the JSX that renders the chatbot, it's all omitted, of course, because you know it wouldn't fit on a slide otherwise, but feel free to kind of have a look at the code for yourself. Now let's look at some specifics of the things that we have to do to make this chatbot work. Firstly, we've got to create the chat thread. We've got to be able to send messages to the chatbot that the user types in, and we've got to be able to retrieve messages so that we can display them to the user. We can see best how these things work by putting the front end and the back end code next to each other and tracing out the HTTP requests. On the left, you can see the create thread function, and that gets called when the user first visits our web page. The main thing that the create thread function does it sends a HTTP POST request to our backend to create the new chat thread. The backend then uses the OpenAI code library to create the chat thread. The next thing we need to be able to do is send messages that the user has typed in to the chatbot. So a little bit further down in the front end and the back end code, we can see how a new message is added to the thread. At this point, the user has typed a message into the input. They have clicked the send button and that calls the send message function. The front end then makes a HTTP POST request to the back end to send the message. The back end needs to do two things. Firstly, it calls a function in the OpenAI code library to create the message, and that sends the message to the OpenAI API, and in turn that adds the message to our chat thread. And then it calls the create run function. This starts the uh, OpenAI API processing the message thread and generating a response to the user. The final detail we need to look at a little bit further down in the front end and back end code is how we receive messages from the chatbot. So in the front end, this starts with the update messages function that we call periodically to retrieve those responses from the chatbot. So on a regular basis, the front end is making HTTP post requests to the back end to list the messages that are currently in the, in the message thread that's coming back from the chatbot. The back end does two things to handle this. First is, is it calls the list messages function from the OpenAI code library that goes out to the OpenAI API and pulls the list of messages back. And these are the messages that we're going to actually display to the, to the user. Also, in the event that a run or a, a processing of the message thread is already in progress, this means the AI is still thinking about it. The chatbot is still doing some work. We get the status of it, uh, of the run from the OpenAI API using this retrieve run function. And this allows us to read the status and to know if the current run is completed or not. 
After the HTTP POST request has returned from the back end to the front end, we've got the list of messages to display to the user. And so we call the set messages function. This is just a state setting function in React. It's basically just adding the messages to the state and causing the web page to re-render and show the updated messages to the user. Now, if we've finished the run, that means if we've got a status of completed, we're gonna stop the polling. So what, what that means is that we're gonna kind of set the run ID to un, undefined. And in the real code, that actually stops the polling uh, for updates, which makes this a slightly better performance uh, web application. But there's a little bit of a hack here, a little bit of a workaround. We're waiting five seconds before we, we set that run ID to undefined, before we stop the polling. And that's just to make sure all the messages came through. If we did that immediately, not all the messages have come through from the chatbot yet. So you get a kind of an incomplete result. That wasn't great. And that's the reason I put this little workaround in there. There's probably a, a better way to solve this, although I'm just not sure what it is yet. So if you can think of a better way to solve this and, and be able to kind of stop this immediately without this hacky timeout, uh, please let me know. Uh, I'd, love to, I'd love to know what you come up with. So it's not enough that we write the code. We have to test it as well. So let's first run the back end. We use npm install to install dependencies and we need to set some environment variables. So first we need to set our open AI API key and on Windows you will use the set command. But uh, if you are trying to do this on Mac OS or Linux, you'll want to use the export command instead. We also need to kind of set our assistant ID as an environment variable. So we know what the code knows what assistant to use. And again, uh, if you're on Mac OS or Linux, you'll want to use the, the export key for that. Uh, sorry, the export command for that. And now we can just run the back end in development mode. Development mode gives us live reload so we can make some code changes and the back end will automatically start again as we're making code changes. In another terminal, we're going to run the front end. Again, we want to run npm install so we can install the dependencies that we need to run this. There's no environment variables needed this time. So we can just run the front end in development mode. And again, development mode comes with live reload so we can change the web page and we can see it update as we change it. If you want to test this for yourself after you've run it, you can go to the URL at the bottom of the screen there, localhost 1234, and you should see your chatbot. You should be able to interact with it and interacting with it will interact with the back end and interacting with the back end will interact with the uh, OpenAI API using your API key. So that's how you can run the chatbot locally for development. Of course, you're going to want to deploy this as well somewhere where people can see it publicly and interact with your chatbot. I'm not going to cover that in this video, but I will cover that later if, uh, if people ask for it. So that's it for this video. Just a short overview of how to create an open AI chatbot like ChatGPT, but using your own, hosting it in your own web application. If you want to learn more, you can't go past the open AI docs. That's how I learned everything I know. You can't even ask ChatGPT about this stuff yet because it's, it's so new. And there's not many tutorials around for this sort of stuff. Read the docs, become an expert in their docs. If you need help with this stuff, want to talk about it, please feel free to reach out to me. Thanks so much.